inside the classrooms where teachers are constantly under attack. The abuse, the assaults, and now the plan to target bad teachers' pay packets. Australia's music scandal. How they rig the charts, creating false idols. Good evening and welcome to Today Tonight and thanks for joining us. First tonight, a warning just in time for winter. As the temperature starts to fall, our use of heaters starts to rise. You might have heard about Roswell, the great conspiracy theory about UFOs crashing in the deserts of New Mexico. Well, Australia has its own UFO mystery as well. This goes back more than 40 years, witnessed by 200 people who say it was kept secret by the military. As Brian Seymour reports, more light is now being shone on Australia's Westall incident. This boy come running in saying, Mr Greenwood, Mr Greenwood, there's these things in the sky, there's these things in the sky. We looked up and we just saw this saucer type thing taking off. It wasn't a plane, it wasn't a balloon, it was nothing like that. A lot of the kids took off towards where it seemed to go. All the students were just running all over the place, uh, hysterical. Went to a high school as a, as a teaching situation, ceased. My girlfriend and I sat on the fence, climbed the fence, the school boundary, and we were crying, thinking it was the end of the world. For 44 years, the story of what happened at Westall has been largely untold all covered up. That afternoon, our principal called a, a special um, assembly and told us all not to talk about it. I was prepped uh, to tell the students that what they'd seen didn't exist. We were told that we weren't allowed to speak to the media. You've most likely heard about the best-known UFO encounter that occurred at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. But the fifth greatest UFO mystery on the planet happened a world away, just southeast of Melbourne, in the suburb of Clayton South. It happened at Westall High School on Wednesday, April 6, 1966. Recess time, about 11 o'clock in the morning. Scientists and UFO experts have long known about the Aussie sighting, but until now, the details have been locked in our past. All I knew was what I saw, and it definitely was not any aircraft of the day by any stretch of the imagination, and it certainly was not a weather balloon. It still would take me to my grave. What, what the hell was that? It was amazing, and something that you know, I've never forgotten. Victor Sukruzny was in second form when he says he had a very close encounter. After watching with over 150 other children a mysterious saucer-shaped craft land, he decided to approach it. You could feel heat about a metre away coming from. It was pretty warm or hot, and then it just gradually lifted, lifted up, and then went off towards the pines. We're talking about 200 people, and um, a lot of them were kids too. They were at school, so I mean, uh, I think adults have got preconceptions about what a UFO might or may not be, but kids are a different matter, and. and um, yeah, when you've got 200 witnesses, either there was something strange in the tuck shop lunch that day or there was something else going on. A news crew interviewed several students at the school right after the event, so filmmaker Shane Ryan tracked down the tape. But oddly, there was nothing there. I was absolutely devastated and nobody had any idea where it had gone. A teacher saw one of his colleagues who had taken pictures confronted by a man in a dark blue suit. He was demanded that she hand over, not the film, but the entire camera. However, one written account survives in the Dandenong Journal newspaper, which reported the occurrence, questioned the involvement of the military and the cover-up by school officials. Flying saucers have invaded our planet. Washington, London, Paris. Popular culture made popular flying saucers and sightings were common. They are real anyway. They come from the other planets. Some of them may come from the centre of the Earth. People can say anything. What we must do is look at the original reports of the time and see what really happened. The idea that what those people saw came from outer space is alien to Richard Saunders from Australian Skeptics. On that very morning, not too far away, about 30 kilometres away, a weather balloon was released the winds were blowing towards the school. Now, I've seen a weather balloon in the sky near uh, an airport, and 
stuff me. I didn't know what it was. One thing that we would really like would be that someone either from the police or the military would come forward and say, yes, they were there. Some of the surviving witnesses are appealing for those with official information to come forward. Incredibly, and despite the involvement of the Army, Air Force and Police, there is not one single mention of the Westall incident in government files. You're asking me whether an R&D establishment would destroy evidence. Yes, of course they would. Bearing in mind that in the 1960s, Australia had great success uh, financially with uh, some of their pilotless target aircraft. Information related to some of these sorts of projects, if it was to be released to the, to the wrong party, uh, then it would have very adverse effects on Australia from a financial point of view. And this was happening in the 60s, right? And in a lot of countries around the world, a lot of governments were quite worried about UFO sightings, not from the perspective of invasion, but mass hysteria. Dr Martin Plowman was the first Australian to earn a PhD in UFOlogy from the University of Melbourne. I do believe that there's life out there on other planets, but I think it's a long way away. And whether it's actually coming here in spacecraft and taking people out of their bedrooms at night, I'm not sure about that, but I've got an open mind. Documentary maker Shane Ryan has an obsession with what occurred at Westall. He's pieced together what is known and recorded scores of interviews with those school children who are all now in their 50s and 60s. I looked up and I was facing the object in the sky and um, I just thought, oh, somebody's got some way of uh, projecting a film of something into the sky. I didn't believe that it was really happening. But um, my boss turned around and he saw it and we stood there looking at it for several minutes. They crossed and walked down here to this corner. After a while, um, trucks turned up with, um, it looked like army trucks. I was called down to the headmaster's office and there were two men in the headmaster's office, very well-dressed gentlemen um, in suits. They weren't introduced to me in person and I don't know where they came from. From my references now as an adult, I would say they were Asia. Then we went into, oh, and we suppose you think you saw a flying saucer. And I looked like, well, I didn't say that. I said I saw an object and, and we suppose you saw little green men. When I came out, I think I burst into tears. They were certainly Australian government and I think it was part of their job to keep everything quiet. It seems to me that, that a lot of the stories around this incident are elaborations made up over the years. The authorities had found a way to silence the children, but they still had unfinished business with the teacher, Andrew Greenwood. He told me that two officers came to his home and threatened him under the Official Secrets Act. They said that he couldn't have seen a flying saucer at Westall because there were no such things as flying saucers. They threatened to tell people he was alcoholic, even though he wasn't. I have to admit that I don't believe in UFOs myself. I, I don't think that aliens are coming here and doing things to people, but I do believe witnesses when they say that they have seen something they can't understand because I think the universe is a really big place and much bigger than we understand it yet to be. It was their job to, to squash what was being seen. It was a bunch of kids that saw this, so we would be able to squash this down. I believe there's life out there. I look up at the sky and say, like, where are you, you people? Come and talk to me. And the documentary Westall 66 premieres tomorrow night at 8.30 on Foxtel Sci-Fi Channel. Coming up on today's tonight, we count down the greatest television and movie characters.